And we're back to claims and concessions. Okay. Okay, so reference. All right, so we're back to claims and concessions. Uh, when a claim is made, when a concession is made, there was um, some change in the 2017 laws when it came to claims, um, and we will talk about those. So a claim is made when a player makes a statement to the fact that he will win a specific number of tricks. Um, uh, when he suggests that play be curtailed, shows all of his cards, um, that would be a claim. The law says that when someone makes a claim, they should, uh, it should be accompanied uh, with a statement. Uh, but a player makes a statement to the effect that he will lose a specific number of tricks, claim a specific number, uh, concede any number, um, a player concedes all the remaining tricks when he abandons his hand, when he puts them in the board. Uh, regardless of the above, if a defender attempts to concede one or more tricks and his partner immediately objects, no concession has occurred. So our law says that a claim should be accompanied at once by a clear statement as to the order which the cards will be played of the line of play or defense through which the claimer proposes to win the tricks. So this is where the change was. It used to say, the law said that when a claim was made, play ceased. The director was called and the director came and adjudicated the, the uh, claim as equitably as possible to both sides with doubtful points going against the claimer. That was the old law. Now the new law says that, claim, that uh, play is suspended. And what that means is it's not stopped, it's just paused. And so there are two options when someone makes a claim. The play is suspended or paused, and they can either call the director or they continue to play it out. This was something that was always done at the tables before this law was changed, where people just played it out. But the problem was is that sometimes when people play it out, because there's been an objection, the declarer now is entitled to some information or privy to some information that helps them to go, oh yeah, there's a, there's a, okay, I'll just play it out and they'll, they'll pull the last trump and now these people will feel like, well, that wasn't fair. Um, we just played it out and he picked my pocket from, for all this information and that wouldn't have happened. Um, and so what they did with the new law was they said, okay, so you have a choice. You can either call the director like you should um, as our old claim laws allowed or required, or you can continue to play. But if you continue to play, you're going to live with the results. Now, as far as suggesting playing it out, this needs to be initiated by the non-claiming side and agreed to by all concerned. So was there concurrence? We wanna be sure that um, a good player or a higher level player um, is not maybe taking advantage of novice players by saying, oh, that's okay, I'll just play it out. And then they just basically, like I said, pick their pocket. So, I, as a club director, would never um, advise my players to play it out ever. I would always say, if there's been a claim and you have an objection, call the director. That's what we're here for. It's job security for me, and it's security for you to know that your rights are going to be protected. But if you agree to play it out, then you're going to live with the results. So adjudication of claims, uh, we wanna maintain calm, gather the facts and resolve claim, resolving claims with an outstanding Trump. We're gonna talk about that. When we have a claim that has objections, there's gonna be a lot of talk at the table. Um, sometimes it's because they haven't made a claiming statement or they started to make a claiming statement and the opponents immediately jumped on them and didn't let them finish. They already have a problem. Um, 
some people are embarrassed because they realize now as they're they're making their statement that they're kind of getting all tangled up in their explanation. Maybe they just stated it poorly, but it was a good claim. So there's a lot of things that go on um, that you need to manage when there's a claim. Okay, so we want to control the table um, and be sure you know, that you let everybody know that you're going to listen to everyone. Um, again, you want to just say, okay, listen, I understand that everybody wants to talk to me, but I can only listen to one person at a time. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have the person who called me to the table, tell me their story, and then I'll just go around and listen to everyone. Everybody's going to get to talk to me. Okay. So you just want to maintain calm. Listen carefully to determine the sequence that occurred. Require the claimer to repeat their claiming statement that they made at the time. If it was interrupted uh, in his original statement, he should be allowed to complete it. Uh, and then be mindful, especially when a player has simply faced his cards without a statement, that any objection by the other side may provoke more thoughtful, uh, careful thought by the, by the claimer. So in our gathering the facts, we're going to hear the objections of the, of the opponents. Uh, we're gonna require everyone to face their cards so that we can determine uh, what is going to happen. Listen to any rebuttal or clarification that they want to make. Let everybody get all the stuff off their chest. And then maintain control. Don't allow players to repeat the same argument multiple times. Um, when players are repeating the same argument opening um, every time, you know, multiple times, it's because they don't feel like you're hearing them. They don't feel like you understand what they're saying. So, um, if they're repeating themselves, um, you might that might be kind of a, a red flag for you that maybe they don't think you're you're hearing them. So you want to be sure and reflect back to them that you understand you heard what they said and now you're going to listen to the other objections and you're going to make your determination as fairly as possible to both sides. Okay. Claims with an outstanding trump. Uh, the non claimers get a trick if. And all these things need to be in place. The claimer did not mention the trumps in his statement. And there was a chance that the claimer did not realize the trump remained on the, in the opponent's hand. And there is a normal play that would allow the claimer to lose a trick to that trump. Um, we talk about normal. Um, it, it could be inferior or careless. Um, that, that happens all the time. People get ahead. Uh, so... Here's an example, spades or trump, the lead is in the south, declarer who is south claims with no statement and there's an outstanding trump. How many tricks remaining is the south going to get? Anybody want to type in chat? Um, so it's it's going to be all. They're going to re they're going to get all the rest of the tricks. And here's the principle: when he is in his hand, we assume that when a person declarer is playing a suit or a player is playing a suit, they're going to play it from the top down. So because of that, this person is not going to get their trump trick. Okay, for this example. Next example. Spades or Trump, the lead is now in the north. So the declarer south claims with no statement. How many tricks do you think that this site is going to get here? I'm sorry, I've got to get to the bottom here. Okay, so the answer is um, four. All right, we will, we would allow um, West to score their trump trick because it would be inferior, it would be careless, but there's a good chance. Um, I mean, in these situations, you wonder why is there a three of spades 
still in West's hand. I had a, a really dear friend, a player, much older, who used to say, Trumps are important, especially, you know, Trumps are like children. You have to watch the little ones. Um, and that's true in this case. This West player, I don't know when Trumps were played or how the hand was played, but they obviously played their hand in a way that they kept the smallest Trump. Uh, it's a great deceptive play. And maybe the declarer just lost track of it and thought that it was no longer out. So it's careless to Trump with the two, but it's not unreasonable that somebody might do that. And so in this situation, we would likely award a Trump to, uh, to this, this side. Okay. Spades or Trump, the lead is in the North, declare South claims with no statement. So here the East-West hands are reversed and East has the three of spades. So in this situation, it's different uh, because the declarer is allowed to observe the play of his right-hand opponent. So we would not allow, we would not let them um, award them a trick for an outstanding trump that was left. Okay, so your, your goal in resolving doubtful points is to adjudicate the result as equitably as possible to both sides. But again, the doubtful points go against the declare or the, the claimer. And then to understand the difference, the definition of normal, it includes play that would be careless or inferior for the class of player involved. So when, adjudica when adjudicating claims, the director's most difficult task is to distinguish between a bad claim and a claim that's poorly stated, a badly stated claim. Uh, when the player has erred in his analysis of the situation, then the claim is likely to be faulty. But when they've solved the bridge problem and then stated it poorly, the director should allow the claim. And so let's look at a, a few examples here of of some claims. So South is on lead. He faces his hand, claiming the rest, and he's in no trump. He's claiming the rest without stating a line of play. How many tricks is South going to get from here? You guys are so heartless not letting him have any. But the answer is they don't get any, okay? So when, when South faced their hand, what they said is my hand is good. And so there's no reason why South would play their spades before they would play their king of clubs. And if they play their king of clubs, they're losing to the ace of clubs and now all those little hearts are good. So we would award no more tricks to South if this were, uh, if this were at the table in this example. Okay. Contract is four clubs by the South. The lead is in the South and he claims making no statement. How many tricks do we think we will award South? getting all kinds of answers here. So the, the contract is four clubs. So we have a high club out. So we know they're getting at least one trick. If South were to lead the eight of clubs, they would get all the trick or they would get two. Let's see, they would get all the tricks. Actually, they would win the nine and, and now get the Jack nine of hearts. But the principle here is that when there is an outstanding Trump, and he has claimed, um, P players do not typically uh, continue playing Trump when they think all Trump are in. And so we would allow here the lead of a spade, which would go to the king, and then they would play the queen of spades, which they would trump, 
and now they would get that. So they're gonna get two of the last tr three tricks, okay, in this situation. Now the contract is four hearts by the south. The declarer has just roughed in the low in uh, roughed his low diamond with the jack of hearts in the dummy. So he's up here because he's roughed the jack of the jack of diamonds, or I'm sorry, a low diamond with his jack of hearts, and he claims making no statement. So how many tricks are we going to award here? So the correct answer is all of them are gonna be going to uh, South. And the reason being is he has demonstrated there, there's a reason when there's an outstanding Trump, again, we wanna determine why is there an outstanding Trump? Um, and in this case, we can see by the play of the hand, he was having to rough, he had to rough a diamond before he could pull his last Trump or he had a diamond loser. So we would allow him to rough the diamond and now return to his hand and we're going to allow him to pull the last trump. Okay, so again, these are just, these are not just necessarily automatic. We wanna ask the declarer, why didn't you make a, st a statement about the outstanding trump? Because truly, anytime there's an outstanding trump and you say to the declarer, were you aware there was an outstanding trump? What did they say? Of course, I knew there was an outstanding Trump. Never, ne they're never going to tell you they've lost track of Trump. But you can kind of determine by reviewing their play how it is that you, you believe that they either did or did not know that there was an outstanding Trump. And if they can't give you a good reason, this guy can give you a good reason as to why he left the Ten of Hearts out. Um, on previous, the previous one with the Three of Spades, maybe not so much. So these are the things that you need to ask. Okay, skill sets you'll use with claims, uh, control of the table, anger management, careful listening. Um, there's there's gonna be a lot of discussion when you get to the table and there's been a claim and there's a dispute. And so this is just something that you want to uh, really be aware of, uh, stay in control of. You don't wanna interrupt the whole, the whole room, cause a ruckus. Um, so, and then under, careful listening, understanding the definition of normal play, um, in, which normal includes careless or inferior. You know, players will say, well, you can't make me play stupid. Okay, <laughs> but I can determine that you might've been careless in this situation. I understand I'm not making, I'm not calling you stupid, I'm not making you play stupid, but the law says that you are, certainly can be careless or inferior and, and I've determined that that's what happened here.